Pittsburgh. Once a haven for the coal and steel industries, the region was pockmarked with coal mines, steel mills, and other hallmarks of heavy industry. Aided by easy access to coal and the rivers that provided transportation, the region flourished. However, the 1980s brought about the slow and agonizing demise of the steel industry, and the region fell upon economically distressing hard times. Thanks to the resiliency of its education, technology, and healthcare industries, the region has undergone a remarkable revitalization. Jobs are plentiful in the region, and despite a nationwide downturn in the housing market, the area market remains stable. Pittsburgh has successfully reestablished itself as a world-class center for education and economic commerce. However, some reminders of the region's dark industrial past remain. An unusually high percentage of the land inside the city limits remains unused. As high as 10% of the land inside Pittsburgh can be classified as either a gray field or a brown field, both of which are types of vacant, contaminated, underutilized land. These vacant lots are distributed throughout the city and not limited to only economically distressed areas. After industries vacate brownfields and houses are demolished on gray fields, heavy metal contaminants remain behind in the soil even after the site appears to be clean. Our plan for remediation is to use biofuel crops like corn, soybean, and canola to remove heavy metals. If the plants concentrate heavy metals in their tissues, then the metals will be removed from the site upon harvest. Mascaro Center researchers have identified eight brown and grayfield areas to test the strategy, four of which are located in economically distressed areas. In the past, these sites have been used for garages, houses, apartment buildings, and a steel mill. However, they are all presently unoccupied. Through a collaboration with GTEC Strategies, a local Pittsburgh nonprofit group, the sites have been planted with various biofuel crops, including sunflowers, switchgrass, and canola. Pitt researchers have been traveling to the sites since 2008 to collect data on the heavy metal concentrations in the soil, and GTEC has been planting some of the sites for as long. When our group travels to the sites, first, a map of the site is drawn so that sampling locations are consistent from year to year. Then, after the sampling locations are found, a hole is dug to a depth of 12 inches. Sometimes, this is complicated by the presence of stray building materials. After the hole is measured and it is confirmed that the hole is 12 inches deep, soil is scraped from the top and bottom sections of the wall of the hole. The soil is placed into plastic collection baggies for removal from the site. After the samples are taken, the soil in the hole is replaced. The samples are gathered together and the team leaves the site. After we bring the samples back to the lab, we weigh them using the laboratory scale. And then we bake them overnight in the laboratory oven to remove any moisture. After the samples are done baking, we take them out of the oven, we weigh them again, and then we grind them using a mortar and pestle. That way, the surface area of the soil is increased, and any rocks that wouldn't be digested are left in their large size. Afterwards, we sieve them using a sieve, take only the smallest fraction, and take it upstairs to the special laboratory microwave oven for acid digestion. After digestion, we bring the samples back and prepare them for chemical analysis with the atomic absorption spectrometer. We take advantage of the fact that every element absorbs light at a unique wavelength to determine the concentration of the heavy metals in the soil. We emit light from a unique wavelength in the lamp in here, shoot it through the machine and through a very hot furnace where the samples are atomized. We can establish concentrations with a set of standard solutions to reach a standard curve and then compare our samples absorbances to the standard curve to determine the concentration. The potential for heavy metal remediation through biofuel crop phytoremediation is not only confined to Pittsburgh. 
Underused land is common in many major cities, and soil contamination is a widespread problem in industrialized nations. For example, in the European Union, approximately 16% of the total land area is affected by some kind of soil degradation. In Germany, biofuels already meet almost 5% of the nation's total energy demand, compared with 4% for the United States and 6% for the European Union. With forward-thinking programs like the Federal Ministry of Education and Research's Bioenergy 2021, Germany plans to increase the total use of renewable energy sources to meet targets set by the European Union Climate and Energy Change Package and Germany's Integrated Energy and Climate Change Program. The biomass necessary for biofuel production commonly competes with food crops, sparking the food versus fuel conflict. However, by using marginal land to produce biofuel feedstock, the competition between fuel and food is minimized, since no land used for food production is consumed for the production of fuel on marginal land. While the largest and most heavily contaminated regions of Germany are the most industrialized regions, specifically the Rhine, Ruhr, and Saar regions, contaminated areas exist around most major cities. Land underutilization and heavy metal contamination are the primary targets of this study in Pittsburgh, and the outcomes have the potential to assist German cities.